Pillars of Eternity is an RPG by Obsidian Entertainment made in the style of older Western RPGs like Baldur's Gate and Planescape Torment. Beginning the game, I immediately felt like I had been transported back in time to when these sorts of RPGs were in vogue. It's crazy to think that Planescape Torment, one of the most celebrated Western RPGs ever made, came out almost 20 years ago. <laughs> Where has the time gone? After a text-based, narrated intro, you are then tasked with creating your main character. It's here that you'll see the direct link these games have to tabletop RPGs such as Dungeons & Dragons. The visual aspects to your character are pretty basic, but the stats are in-depth, and unless you're playing on one of the easiest modes, they do matter. Yes, even the skills. Once you get into the game proper, you find yourself in a caravan with a number of other travelers. You've all come to this place a region of the world known as the Eastern Reach, for different reasons, many of which your companions aren't willing to divulge. While your caravan rests in the Deerwood, a nation within the Eastern Reach, a mysterious storm appears and kills everyone except you, and possibly a second character depending on the choices you made. Yes, this game has choices that will actually change the outcome of the game, so choose your course wisely. Anyway, while taking refuge in a nearby cave, you stumble upon a group of cloaked figures engaged in some sort of ritual around a mysterious ancient machine. As the machine powers up, you are hit with a massive bolt of energy and are suddenly seeing strange visions. As you make your way into the nearest town, you quickly find out that you are now what is called a Watcher, someone with the ability to see people's souls. You can see the souls of the dead, as well as the past lives of the living, and while this gift is immeasurably useful, you also find out that it will slowly drive you mad. Not wanting to end up that way, you embark on a journey to figure out who awakened this power in you, and to somehow reverse the process. As you probably guessed, there's quite a lot more to the story, particularly in the many side quests available to you. There are also a number of different endings depending on how you played the game, with one being the good, true ending. Sadly, the endings are a little underwhelming, as most of them play out in various slides, but I can imagine it wasn't terribly cost-efficient to fully animate and voice them all. Ah, the downsides of kickstarted niche games. While I certainly enjoyed the story in Pillars of Eternity, I can safely say it doesn't quite reach the level Planescape Torment did. That's not to knock the game, though. The writing is compelling and the cast of characters was incredibly likable. In all honesty, comparing it to the pinnacle of the genre is pretty unfair. It's just really hard not to when that game has made such an indelible impact on me. I also felt that Pillars had a bit of a slow start. It took me a few hours to immerse myself in this new world and really start connecting with the cast of characters. Once the game really got underway, it really sunk its hooks into me. I played it nearly every single day until I completed it. I know that doesn't sound like much, but as an adult, I found it increasingly difficult to dedicate myself to long play sessions, but this one got to me. Heck, that's such huge praise for me, I could basically just end the review here, but I'll keep going. The gameplay of Pillars of Eternity has a definite learning curve, unless you've played this style of game recently. There's a ton of information thrown at you in the menus, and everything is laid out in a typical, and rather archaic nowadays, fashion. There's a lot going on here, so let me try to break it down for you. When you go into your main menu, you'll see all your characters, their current equipment, and their inventory. Managing all of this can be kind of a pain at times, as you have to select a character to see their stats, even if you're looking at items in someone else's inventory. You've also got your stash, which is where the majority of your items are going to be kept. This is pretty easy to navigate, and is awesome to have since your characters can't hold nearly this much. The designers of Pillars also thought ahead and allow you to buy and sell directly from your stash as well, so there's no shuffling items around. Speaking of all the stuff you pick up, it is sometimes difficult to know whether or not you need an item or not. Many of the extra items can be used in things like crafting, but the game doesn't put any kind of marker on them, so you basically have to just keep track of everything manually. Which can really suck after a while. Now there's some of that old time design I remember. Crafting is extremely straightforward, in that you just choose which item you want to make from the menu, and then you can craft it on the spot if you have the requisite items. 
most of the item recipes are available right at the beginning of the game, although they are technically unavailable until you hit the right level, while others are gained from various NPCs during the game. Many of these items are very useful, and it's great to be able to craft them whenever you need them. Equipping items is fairly straightforward as you just pick what you want and put it into the correct slot on the character. The game will also automatically compare equipment if you mouse over the new item, which is really nice. One thing to keep in mind here are all of the different stats that are detailed. Sometimes the higher attack or defense value isn't the best decision, as it could make attacks slower, get rid of a handy effect, etc. You've probably noticed a theme here. There's a lot of things to keep track of if you're not playing on the easiest story mode. This is a staple of the genre, and it may be the thing that makes or breaks this game for you. Heck, I'm not even finished yet. You still need to adjust your stats whenever you level up. Just like tabletop RPGs, you won't be gaining a ton of levels. Endgame is about level 12. But when it happens, you earn a number of experience points that you will need to divvy up amongst your stats. You'll also earn skill points as well as new abilities, some classes having a lot more available than others. When you recruit new characters, you'll notice that they already have their class and stats set. These are generally fine, but if you really want to, you can go to an inn and completely respec any of your characters at any time. Apparently this was changed significantly after release due to fan input, so hey, there's an upside to reviewing a game late. Phew, well we've gotten through all of that, and we haven't even covered how battles work yet. If there's one thing that carried over to more modern western RPGs, it was the battle system. Well, mostly. When you initiate a battle by running across an enemy, the game will automatically pause to allow you to choose your actions, be it moving, attacking with weapons, changing weapons, using items, using spells, using abilities, etc. It's all fairly straightforward as you just click a character and then choose what you want them to do on their action menu, and when you're ready, hit the spacebar to unpause. Pausing can be done at any time with the spacebar, and trust me, you're going to be doing it a lot, especially when you run into mobs of enemies. One annoying thing was trying to keep track of which character was where. You can zoom in to see better, but when the screen was filled with loads of stuff, it did get really tough to tell. There were definitely lots of times where I had a character accidentally disengage an enemy, causing me to take a bunch of extra damage because I told them to fight another one by mistake. Whoops. Besides those little hiccups, battles flow quite well and are very enjoyable. I found the challenge to be uneven at times. The last boss in particular feels like a huge jump in difficulty, but is balanced well overall. Pillars of Eternity is challenging while not being impossibly difficult either, on both normal mode and the harder ones. I will hand out an important warning to you here about the end of the game though. Before you go into the last dungeon, you'll know it when you get there. Make sure you have finished all your quests, are well stocked, and are at least level 10 to 12, or you might find yourself stuck and unable to complete the game. I made the mistake of only being level 8 when I went in, and got stuck. As much fun as the game is, it wasn't fun having to go and restart the entire game because of this. Talk about an old school design decision that I did not miss in the least. Pillars of Eternity has another big mechanic in it, and that's the ability to manage your very own keep, which is unlocked after completing a certain quest early on in the game. The management doesn't require a lot of micromanagement, as it's mostly just a fun aside, but it does have enough perks to make it worth doing. At first there isn't a whole lot you can do but spend money to build things, but eventually you can have your own shops, an inn to stay in for free with a variety of different buffs, and you can even take on special quests that pop up from time to time, as long as you have a character present there anyway. All of this is totally optional, but worth the time and money spent for sure, especially since it makes for an easy home base to return to during your travels. Speaking of traveling around, sometimes the loading in the game is pretty long. Generally after the initial load it's not too bad, but from time to time it's noticeable. It's a little weird that a game like this loads slower than many graphically superior titles, but hey, it's not an obsidian game without some jank, am I right? <laughs> Exploring the world of Pillars of Eternity is pretty fun, as there's all sorts of treasure to find, and the maps are gorgeous to look at. But sometimes you'll run into enemy mobs that will wipe you out really quickly. 
using the sneak option to give yourself some time to flee if necessary, as well as saving often are highly recommended. Seriously, I died so many times just by looking around. I also highly recommend that you make use of your quest log, as it's really easy to become overwhelmed with all the stuff going on. The log is very handy in that it updates itself every time you make progress on a quest, so you're rarely going to run into situations where you're unsure of what to do next. Of course, if you're really stuck, you can jump over to the Pillars wiki, because the internet is a wonderful place. Well, sometimes. You might have noticed that my characters are running around the maps really quickly in the video, and that's because you have the ability to play the game at different speeds. There is slow, normal, and fast. Fast mode is my favorite because I'm impatient, but it does kind of break immersion somewhat as everyone moves at double speed, even the NPCs, so you might want to stick to normal mode. I'd also recommend against fast mode during battles because you will get overwhelmed extremely fast. Whew, have you absorbed all of that information? Well, we aren't quite done yet because I have to talk about the way the game looks and sounds. Most of the visuals in this game fit right in with the classics of the Western RPG genre, with the beautiful hand-drawn backgrounds and character portraits. Pillars is a little different in that all of the character models are 3D instead of 2D. Personally, I prefer the look of the old 2D sprites, but having a 3D does seem to allow for more customization, so you might feel a bit differently. What I particularly liked about the look of the game is how big it makes the world feel. Many of the maps are large and have a real sense of scale to them. The main city in particular actually feels like a huge city, not just one in name only. The sound design of Pillars is excellent as well, with awesome sound effects and a huge amount of the dialogue being fully voiced. Now I believe the cast is actually quite small, with most of the actors playing multiple different characters and NPCs, but they all do a great job, and it's really impressive considering just how much dialogue is present. Lastly, we get to the soundtrack, and it is kind of a similar story to many games nowadays. It fits the game beautifully, and is extremely listenable inside and outside of the game, but it doesn't feel terribly iconic. Months down the line, I'm not sure I'd be able to recognize the songs that well if someone played them for me, and they weren't the kind of songs I would be humming to myself when not playing the game. Overall, I really enjoyed my time with Pillars of Eternity. Sure, there were a few hiccups here and there, but they were pretty minor in the grand scheme of things, and I say that having trapped myself at the endgame once. Now, I can't say this one is a triumph of the genre like Baldur's Gate 2 or Planescape Torment, but it's still a great game and a callback to a long dead genre, so it's a no-brainer for fans. For those who are unexperienced, I'd still say give it a shot because you might just find the genre right up your alley. And if you don't, well, it's not a terribly pricey game at this point, so it's not a huge risk. Oh, and let's hope that the sequel due out in 2018 is just as good or even better than this one was.